Follow In The Footsteps of Heroes on our In The Footsteps Classic D-Day Tour. Our Classic D-Day Tour is based in Bayeux and will visit the most significant sites of the Allied invasion that took place on the 6th of June 1944. The tour begins when we depart from your agree pickup point at 9am. Our first stop of day one is St Mary Glees, the first town to be liberated. Here, your battlefield historian will discuss the exploits of the 82nd All-American and 101st Screaming Eagles Airborne Divisions before taking you to the excellent Airborne Museum. It is then on to La Frere, the bridge and causeway that had been briefly in American hands on D-Day. That was changed by a moment of indecision and a three-day epic struggle to break out across the base of the Cottonton Peninsula ensued. Here we discuss the many actions that took place, including that of Private First Class Charles de Glopper, who posthumously received the Medal of Honour. We then head to Pickerville to pay our respects to the US 9th Air Force and remember those who flew the C-47 Skytrains that delivered the American Airborne to their drop zones. It is then on to Highsville where the gliders of the 101st Airborne Division landed and Brigadier General Don Pratt met his untimely end before heading to the Brea Court Battery where Lieutenant Dick Winters and the men of Easy Company 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment the Band of Brothers destroyed the German guns. From Brecourt, we head towards Utah Beach, stopping off at the Richard Winters Leadership Memorial on the way, before continuing to the beach where the US 4th Infantry Division came ashore. Here, we discuss the actions of Brigadier General Theodore Roosevelt Jr., whose personal valour, courage and leadership on D-Day led to the award of the Medal of Honour. Our final stop of day one is at Le Cambe German Military Cemetery, where amongst others, the German tank case Michael Wittmann is buried. Day two of our tour begins when we depart from your agreed pickup point at 9am. The first stop of the day is at Pointe de Hoc, the cliff-top German coastal artillery battery that was assaulted by Lieutenant Colonel James Earl Rudder's 2nd Ranger Battalion. We then head for the western end of Omaha Beach at verville sur where we discuss the landing by the US 116th Infantry Regiment of the 29th Division and shed some light on the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. It is then on towards St. lawrence sur to discuss the landings of the US Rangers and tell you how they got their motto, Rangers Lead the Way. We then head to the eastern end of Omaha Beach to discuss the landing of the US 16th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Big Red 1 Infantry Division. Here we explore the area where 1st Lieutenant Jamie Monteith Jr. of Company L 16th Infantry Regiment carried out the actions led to him being awarded a posthumous Medal of Honor before heading to the 1st Infantry Division's memorial. Here we discuss the actions of two more American soldiers who were awarded the Medal of Honor, Technician 5th Grade John J. Pinder Jr. and Private Colt William Barrett, and how the Big Red One fought their way off the beat. It is then on to the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial, where we visit the memorial to remember those who died and have no known grave, and the cemetery to pay our respects to the fallen. Our next stop is the new British Normandy Memorial near Versailles, where we pay our respects before heading to aramanche le and the Musée de Barcamont. Here you learn about the artificial Mulberry Harbours that were transported across the English Channel as part of the invasion and the Mulberry Harbour Port Winston where a staggering 2.5 million men, half a million vehicles and 4 million tonnes of supplies were brought ashore to support the liberation of Northwest Europe. Our final stop of the day is at the German Coastal Artillery Battery at Longsumer, with its guns still in their casements and the intact observation posts looking out over the English Channel from the cliff top. Our final day is spent exploring the British and Canadian beaches and the British Airborne area and begins when we depart from your agreed pickup point at 9am. Our first stop is at the British landing beach at Versailles, where we discuss the landings at Gold Beach and the actions of Company Sergeant Major Stanley Hollis, the only person to be awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions on D-Day. 
We then head to the beach at Bernier sur Mer to discuss the Canadian landings at Juneau Beach before continuing on to La Breche to discuss the British landings at Sword Beach. From the British and Canadian beaches, we head to Bueneville, the site of the first action of D-Day and its famous Pegasus Bridge. Here, we discuss the Gliderborn coup de main operation by Major John Howard's D Company, the 2nd Battalion, the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, before giving you the option to take afternoon tea in the Café Gondry, the very first house to be liberated, or visiting the nearby memorial Pegasus. We then take you to your agreed drop-off location, where your battlefield historian bids you farewell. This classic tour has been designed to give you a balanced view of the American and British sectors. We can, of course, adjust the tour to concentrate on the American, British or Canadian landings, or even to follow in the footsteps of a particular unit or individual. These personalised tours are designed specifically for you, so that you get to see what you want to see. For more tour options and prices, please email info at inthefootsteps.com or visit www.inthefootsteps.com.